I think it is actually weird that we have an archive for very formal things. We as a society said we have to keep all our tax reports, account papers, we have to keep all the medical reports. But if finally, for example, if someone passes away, you don't think of their last tax report, right? We think so much in an efficient way that we lose everything what is actually next to it and what is maybe the most human thing and which is, I think, the essence of, of, a, of a human being. Modus Mori is an institute for movement heritage and I chose the term Modus Mori, which is Latin, um, means motus, means like movement and Mori means something like disappearing or dying or endangered. So the idea is to create an archive for the endangered human movement. Around ten dancers to set up this archive. We come to a city um, and we invite a lot of people to come and to donate their movements to the archives. And then it starts with the movement interview. So, now he found me that you went to come. Yeah. I'm now 37. So you are now 83 years old. Now I'm Katja. I'm so. En die bedenker van dit hele Motors Mori archief. En dat is Wies, dat is een van onze dansers. Ja. En Wies gaat nu jouw bewegingen um, de hele tijd overnemen. En ook als je iets ziet waar je denkt, oh nee, dat zou ik zo niet doen. Dan moet je haar dat meteen aangeven. In die interview, when you do the interview with the person, you really try uh, like in real time to constantly take over the movement. Because it's the only moment that you get actually your muse, let's say, um, and yeah, you have to take this chance to always say, ah, he, so she would sit like this, or he would now ha put his hands here, and as more often you do it, as more you will remember afterwards. This is also the keeping, what was it, keeping your body busy yeah. to concentrate. Yeah. Start to do this. Yes, actually your hands are always moving, are always busy somehow. Yeah. Also, in all the movement that we have, it's quite it's quite present. I'd say about you. Does it sound right? Yeah. I think it's a bit like if I if I then make a portrait out of you, there's something I would keep in mind that this hand is just always like somewhere there, or then maybe he goes to the head, like with both here. Yeah. So our aim is to really create an archive which is in movement all the time, which is we keep alive that keeps on moving. So yeah. that's why I will like take over maybe your position like this. So I'll just. Check a bit, okay, how's his foot, how are the hands, how's the back, and these kind of things. To make sure that we don't just talk about the material and the movements, but that I also feel it and I can make sure, okay, what do you think is, is this right, is this wrong? Uh, yeah, but he, I guess he just sleeps like this. Mm -hmm. Well, I sleep, I usually just sleep like, like uh -huh. this. Very comfortable. Uh -huh. The body itself is an archive like, um, that actually consist of also our lives, our memories, things that we're, we're taught by our parents, kind of cultural things that we kind of collect. Mm -hmm. You should just like lock them. And, mm -hmm. and uh, like either with my hands behind my back or... Mm -hmm. Or at the front. And then creating the portrait, is, it's not about imitating the person, but I think it's about finding physical links with all the movements the person has, or also seeing what are physical challenges while someone, for example, has a, find it, finds it difficult to stand up and where it is in the body, instead of just recreating the way how a person is standing up.
she feels a certain limit that she cannot put her weight yeah. on your knees. She's easily out of breath. She has this tremor. Mm -hmm. And then how to tr translate this limit of her body into your body because yeah. your body has a different kind of yeah. physical limits. But that you actually feel the same what she feels in this situation. And if we just highlight that you have to avoid to put weight on your knees. So there's a lot of weight then on the front of the body. This is very, actually a very good. If you then release. My father died two years ago, and um, he was the last one in the family, so my mother already passed away. And then with him, the, the special situation was that he didn't leave anything behind, so no material stuff. So you, yeah, maybe it's a bit romantically thought, but when your father passes away, you always think that you could keep something like but um, with him it was not the case, so I, I, yeah. I, at a certain point, thought about, or I saw him the whole time in front, how to say this? I saw him the whole time in his house when he already was dead, so I could see how he would now sit here or how he would walk, or that when he had like a problem or a problematic period in his life that he always like scratches his head, always really long until it sometimes started to bleed and he didn't uh, recognize it. And so I actually started then to <laughs> reconstruct his movements. And when I did uh, drink coffee in the morning, I was actually thinking, oh, how, w how was he always sitting there when I was a kid? S he was always sitting like this with one leg over the other, which is maybe not a typical male way of sitting. And what is interesting that now, as he's not there anymore, I now start to recreate his movement. So you get it already in a kind of second generation with also my yeah, subjective eye on him. So we use them now as a case study, how to see how you could uh, yeah, how you could reconstruct the movements of a person who's not there anymore. What I mainly learned from him is that that a person is not like one-sided, that there's always a certain duality or layeredness in a person. And this is what I now very often tell also all the dancers when they do the interview, to not make easy personal conclusions. And you have to find a more complete image as far as this is possible in one hour, but I think it's, it's a mindset. Is there anything that you want to be in the archive? So a movement that you know, really feels like yours. Uh, all the cracking fingers, maybe? Yeah, yeah. I guess yeah. that's very, uh, very me. All of these things <laughs> basically make up what we call a kinetic portrait. Mm -hmm. So we pull apart all these pieces. So this sleeping position like this, we pull apart and we fragmentize it to highlight everything that's actually very specific about it. Mm -hmm. So, cause if I would just do it like this, you wouldn't see instead of actually if I, if I fragmentize it and make sure that you can really see that it's the, the cupping of the head to go to sleep, then it becomes much more specific and much more like evident that this is the thing that's unique about it. Mm -hmm. And it's also what it makes it yours. So I'm going to do this with all this material and basically I call them puzzle pieces because every single time I do it, it will also be different mm -hmm. because I won't just do your uh, portrait once. We will continually, like the archiving itself is by continually doing these movements, continually understanding like how you crack this knuckle mm -hmm. so that we can actually archive it and research this movement and keep it alive because mm -hmm. otherwise the movement's lost. And that you try to find a loop of which people link to each other. And then you can also write it down in between. 
by doing this, we at, at a certain point figured out we get more and more people and at a certain point we thought we have to find a way how to memorize them. First we thought, okay, we write all the names down and we make an Excel sheet. But by doing it, we also figured out it's not possible to, to structure this because it's so dynamic and also the whole idea is to build a moving archive and the, the physical archive. So can we find a way in the body to stimulate the body to remember the knowledge it collected? And we call it indexing. So it's about yeah, finding physical links between people instead of having fixed categories. Now try to index always in, your, in the whole body and that you mention which movement links to the next person. There is this gap of, of something very important and triggers the movement of Christina uh, sitting with her baby. Yes, this baby is a jumping baby. Uh, the baby who had this very yeah. um, energetic legs and who was constantly like yeah. this. Mm. And I think these hands tr triggers a uh, Frau Bohn who is uh, getting thrown in the air as a kid. And during the interview, she she got very emotional. So her lips started to to do that to have this little shaking. Can you do one little shaking again? And her eyes started to be a bit watery. She was just looking at her, well, in the interview at this invisible mother in front of her. It triggers the movement of her Thyssen, who was talking about this memory of uh, during the war, when there were bombs all around him. So now he's 94 and he was talking about the after moment when just afterwards everyone was quiet, eyes very open and just the mouth open. Don't you have like eventually that you like lose your own, like... Lose, lose my own? Yeah, like... In some ways, yeah. <laughs> like in some ways as in, because I've interviewed almost 80 people now over the last year or so, that it's not that I lose my movement, it's more I collect other people's movement. So I catch myself that I sleep, I sleep like um, Rosa who, who always puts her toe and her heel like this. Or how I sit, I sit like Bill who actually has a big belly but I sit like this and I, but I, I still have these hands and I'm like whoa, actually these are Bill's hands, these are not mine. So I do, I do catch myself in all these different positions of people. You get to explore actually a lot of like when you have an interview, you have a whole life of stories and memories and movements. And to get this, um, get, get this gift is, I think, is something that you really have to appreciate yeah. to, to do this work. It's a bit like, like monks, I think. Like physical monks. I mean, you must completely believe in wanting to capture all these movements mm. that, that you find that this is the reason why you do this work. Thank you.